Okay, we'll continue with the ECG sets. This is the part two of the 150 ECG cases uh, based on the book John and Joanna Hamptons and uh, David Adlem. So this is an ECG which was recorded from a medical student during a practical class. What does it show? Okay. Now, uh, this ECG is uh, showing a rather sinus rhythm. The rate is around 70 beats per minute. It is showing arrhythmia, sinus arrhythmia. Okay, if you observe all the reads, there is sinus arrhythmia. The axis is normal. The QRS complexes are normal. ST elevation is normal. T wave is normal. Not ST segments is normal. T wave is normal. Now, this is a perfectly normal ECG. Although you can see beat to beat variation in the interval between the QRS complexes out here. Uh, with the heart rate speeding up sometimes and slowing down. Okay. Now, comparison of the rate recorded in the AVF and the V3 if you see. Okay, you, it might give a false impression of change of rhythm. But if you see the rhythm strip out here in V2, it clearly shows the progressive alteration of the RR interval. Now, this variation in heart rate relates to the respiration and this is called a sinus arrhythmia which is normal in young people and sinus arrhythmia can be distinguished from atrial extracystose because in sinus arrhythmia, the morphology of the P wave, okay, the morphology of the P wave is unchanged. Now, what will you do in this ECG? You will do nothing, okay. This is a normal ECG with the sinus arrhythmia. We'll see the next one. So this one is edition 5. This is the latest edition. Uh, the, this ECG was recorded in the accident and emergency department from a 60-year-old man who had had several severe central chest pain for one hour. What does it show and what would you do in this case? Again, this is showing sinus rhythm. The rate is around 82 beats per minute. There is, however, one ventricular extrasystole out there. Okay. The axis is normal. Q waves, there are Q waves in D2, in D2, D2 and D3. Okay. So you can see the Q waves in D2 and D3. Okay. And uh, there is a small Q wave in uh, lead, lead v, VL as well. Okay. And you can see a Q wave in V6. So the Q waves in V6 are very unlikely. But if you see slight deflection, negative deflection, that is a, uh, not very significant, but a present Q wave. There is a uh, raised ST segment in, uh, in the lead V1. And uh, in VL as well, you can see the ST segment elevation. Also, there is significant ST elevation in V3. Okay, you can see some of the five of the V4 is there. Okay, so this is actually um, an acute anterior lateral ST segment elevation, myocardial infarction. Although Q wave is well developed in around V3, the changes are entirely consistent with the story of pain of one hour. Okay, now what to do in this case? The ECG shows ST segment raised by more than 2 millimeter in several leads. Two small boxes. So, he needs immediate PCR. The treatment should not be delayed by waiting for chest x-ray or any other investigation. And the patient may need pain relief with morphine as well as dual antiplatelet therapy, usually aspirin and a P2Y12 inhibitor as soon as available. Only in the hospital setting will you give these medicines. Ventricular extrasystoles do not need any treatment in this case. Okay, so this is a case of acute anterolateral ST elevation MI. This is a case of a 70 year old retired orthopedic surgeon who telephones to say that he always gets dizzy while playing ball. Okay. You find that he has systolic heart murmur, his ECG and chest x-rays are shown. What is the diagnosis and what do you do next? Chest x-ray, but here you can again see sinus rhythm is there. 
starting by the from the SA notes. The rate is around 48 beats per minute. The axis is normal. QR is complex, duration is normal, but the R wave height in B3 is uh, is 30 mm and the S wave depth in B2, if you check, is around 25 mm. And you can see inverted T waves in lead V1, sorry, lead 1, then uh, in lead VL you can see inverted T wave and V3. Sorry, not V V five V six. So V five V six one V N will have are having T wave inverted. Now I don't have the X ray here, but the X ray uh, shows an enlarged left ventricle with post stenotic dilation of the ascending aorta. Uh, this is a classic ECG appearance of ventricular hypertrophy. Now the combination of dizziness on exercise a systolic murmur and evidence of left ventricular hypertrophy suggest strong aortic stenosis. So the next step is echocardiogram in this patient. It, uh, and when they did echocardiogram, it showed a gradient across the aortic valve of 140 millimeter mercury, indicating severe stenosis. So he needs an urgent aortic valve replacement. So this is an ECG of left ventricular hypertrophy. This is an ECG of a 70-year-old man who is admitted to the hospital following onset of severe central chest pain. Now, this is his ECG. What does it show and what treatment is needed? Similar thing, severe central. So, again, this is sinus rhythm. The rate of the sinus beats is 75 beats per minute. Now, this is a second-degree heart block. Yeah, this is Benke Bag hard block, most obvious in the uh, rhythm speed strip which is recorded for me. Uh, the ventricular rate you have to count here. If you can't really count the atrial vent because there are absent areas in most of the day. So, ventricular rate is 70 beats per minute. The axis is normal. Uh, there are small Q waves in D2, D3, and DF. You can see small Q waves in lead 2, 3. You can see raised ST elevation in uh, lead 2, 3 and VF as well. But it's not very uh, significant, I suppose. There is depressed ST segments in lead 5 and lead 6. Okay, so these are the depressed ones. So this patient has second degree block of Wenke back, which is, you can see here, you can see the progressive lengthening of the P wave, PR interval, followed by a non-conducted P wave, and then a return to a short PR interval and repeat of the sequence. Okay. So, you can see the second uh, length then. Okay, so there is progressive lengthening of the PR interval. You can see the progression. And then there is a non conducted P wave. Okay. So there is also a clear evidence of recent acute myocardial infarction in the ST elevation MI. So this patient should be treated in the usual way for his acute myocardial infarction with pain relief, dual anti platelet. An immediate primary PCR. The Venke back second heart block usually begins when it occurs with inferior infarction. And although he must obviously be monitored until sinus rhythm and normal conduction returns, the temporal pacing is not necessary. So, this is a conduct ECG of second degree Venke back AV block with acute inferior ST elevation. So this is an ECG of a 50 year old man who has come to the accident and emergency department with chest pain and he collapsed while his ECG was being recorded. What happened and what should you do? So this is a sinus of the initially and then the rhythm is lost. 
now there are ventricular extrasystoles out here. The third ext extrasystole occurs on the peak of the T wave of the preceding sinus beat. Okay. So after three or four beats of uh, ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation develops, and uh, in the sinus beats there is Q wave and lead three. Okay, and there are these ST elevation and lead two and three, and ST elevation, ST depression and T wave inversion and lead one. Okay. Now, although only one lead one, two, and three are available, it looks as if the chest pain was due to an inferior MI. This was probably the cause of ventricular extrasystole. Uh, in, and uh, this was okay. This was probably the cause of ventricular extrasystole, and the, an R and on T extrasystole caused ventricular tachycardia, which rapidly decayed into ventricular fibrillation. So you can see ventricular fibrillation with ventricular extrasystole in the one, two, three beats. Now it may be argued that lead three and perhaps also in the lead one, you have uh, torsal D pointers, uh, ventricular tachycardia, but this is not apparent in lead two. What to do in this? You will uh, do immediate defibrillation, but if no defibrillator is in hand, then CPR rescue should be performed according to the ACLS guideline. Following return of spontaneous circulation, primary angioplasty is indicated in this case. So prob probable inferior MI are on T ventricular extrasystole causing ventricular fibrillation. Okay, this is it. Continue with the next batch. Next five in the next.